Hey everybody, I'm Tara from Crooked Row, and today is an absolutely gorgeous day. There's, I usually love clouds in the sky, but there is not a cloud in the sky. It is just cool weather. It is such a perfect day. It is, you can tell we are like creeping on the edges of fall. Oh, I love it. But so today, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about our very overgrown garden, some of the mishaps that have happened this year. We have, um, we've actually had some good yields considering all the mishaps that we've had this year. We have had a lot of pressure from our animals and so we had to really, we had to get rid of our cow, which was extremely sad for me. And we have, we currently, are we have fenced in our pasture a little bit better because we have just sustained major losses this year. I mean major losses. Um, the sheep got out and they literally like like to, the, to like this big they ate our tomatoes. I mean and we had hundreds so um, it was pretty big lot. They ate all of our pepper plants. Um, they even, which they t typically don't bother our herbs, but they even started bothering our herbs. I mean, they were just voracious little boogers this year. So it kind of put our gardening on hold. And so when we lose heart and our gardening goes on hold, bad things happen to this garden. <laughs> and so I'm just going to pan around and just kind of show you how overgrown this is. Oh, so I am coming alongside what we call the salad bowl and we are coming over here close to the greenhouse and we're at my rose trellis. You can see this and we are, do, do you see how overgrown this is? You can't even see the boxes, just barely see the boxes. So we're going to come in here specifically here and we're going to weed all of this I'm gonna see if Elijah can't either weed whack or mow in here we're going to organize what my plan is is the so currently we have one two three four single level boxes I'm going to double them up essentially because next year we're gonna we're gonna create potato boxes so what I would like to have is but double leveled one two three four potato boxes next year this will not happen so I noticed that when we do our boxes and we have they call it hugel culture at the bottom but essentially you put in large if you can get large um, stumps if you, so what you do is you get large stumps or big fat tree branches and you line the bottoms with them we try to do this in all of our raised boxes these boxes that I'm showing you over here are only single level and so we didn't do hugel culture in those and so I want you to just take a gander again at how incredible the weeds can't, I mean, it's like, it's like you don't even have a box. It's, it's like planting right in the ground. And so my point to all of, all of everything that we're doing is to have the ease of gardening. And so coming in and pulling weeds just like we would in the ground, why would I go to all the trouble of having a bed? I don't understand. So that's why we're going to double, maybe even triple the boards, the levels and we are going to put hugel culture in the bottom and then we're going to backfill with the nice beautiful compost that we have in there and we'll probably have to add some on top i'm not worried about filling it all the way to the full because we are now in september so i mean that that there's no point to that but while we are standing here i do want you to see look at those sunflowers peeking out and all those weeds oh I love it. There's another one. I don't know if you can see that. Come on, sharpen up. Hmm. 
Well, there's another really pretty one over there. So anyway, so we have this bed here. We're gonna go through and start clearing all this stuff out. And then once we're finished with the cleanup, so we're looking at doing major changes in our garden. We, not just those boxes that we're talking about, but we have decided, I, I never wanted a fence in my garden. I love just being kind of like able to like breeze in and out of the garden at any point that I choose. But we do have so many animals here. That's just not realistic for us anymore. So my plan, now note this is a plan so things can change but we're looking at putting some picket fencing from the greenhouse here over to this trellis and then this trellis all the way down so this is what we call the salad bowl so we're gonna be taking this out and right from the trellis to up here to the corner we're going to put picket fencing and if we have to even run like netting or whatever we have to do to keep animals out um, we'll do that but but picket fencing all the way down all the way down this way kind of where you see the electric fence which by the way the electric fence definitely did not work <laughs> um, I mean we had Definitely the sheep w didn't care and they would just get electrocuted and kind of freak out as they went through it, but they, it was worth it to them. But so <clears throat> we'll have it come probably to out to here, somewhere in here and go back uh, to kind of encapsulate this area still. But um, we're also looking at maybe turning this area like this center area into a an arbor but an arbor that kind of goes we'll probably do it halfway back at first um and then i'd really like to grow grapes um on the sides maybe over top i'm not sure um and then we'll add more raised beds in here and go ahead and starting like somewhere around here we'll have more picket fencing you know that that meets up so that the animals cannot reach this garden so if they get out in the middle of the night and we don't know it it just helps to know that your garden is secure now I've always been one of those people that's kind of passive about especially my animals um, this has been the first year where it taught me that you're going to, if you don't protect your garden from even your own animals, then you're going to sustain major losses. So this is a project that is gonna take us over the next few months and probably into the spring as well. So today is our first foot forward to getting organized and starting a new gardening year next year, but we have to get our infrastructure down first. So let's get started. a new day and we actually finished all of our work well most of it I should say and we decided that it was gonna be a great time for us to go to the lake instead of totally finishing everything that we were gonna do <laughs> with the last uh, ekings of summer happening we are just trying to enjoy the Sun and soak up as many rays as we possibly can so but we did get a lot accomplished so i wanted to show you where we were at and give you an update we had a couple years ago done a video on 
it's called shisugiban and it is an ancient Japanese technique of charring the wood on the outside um, and it preserves the wood and we did this with some of our boxes and I just want to show you a little update first I want to show you that we got this box completely taken down all of this has been weeded this is our asparagus bed that desperately needs weeded but here we this is all uh, the blueberry boxes and strawberries those have been weeded um, we still have some like around the boxes that needs taken out like here and here but these boxes um, we filled this one with all the excess dirt and as we started getting into these boxes especially once we took the dirt out of them we started seeing do you see how much rot there is and like so much rot in fact I mean these are pretty thick solid boards for those to be that rotted so I I'm not sure if it's just that one because if you look so the very so the the first board down there still looks pretty charred and intact so it's it maybe it's just this this second one that we tried to put on top that it's rotted because this second one seems to be okay too so <clears throat> so we have a lot of decisions to make here and one thing that Chris and I are trying to discuss right now is, should we move to metal beds? Um, my only issue is we've had our cedar beds now for five or six years and they're fine. These beds that I just showed you, those are not cedar. I believe they were Douglas fir, I wanna say. And the traditional Japanese uh, method is with cedar wood, so. I'm wondering if this is user error as opposed to, you know, the Japanese, because I have seen people actually on like a Chip and Joanna episode, I think they show Sugi Bond, um, something that was going on a boat. And so it was going to get water and stuff all the time. So I'm not really sure. I, it's probably user error <laughs> to be honest. Um, but maybe we're again we're trying to decide right now what type of new bed to put in so if um we are going to do something uh, so if we're going to put in beds um it, the the question right now is wood or metal the thing i don't like about metal is that it's not as like functioning as wood is like we can put in um, you know our cattle panel trellises and the wood just stands up under it beautifully I don't know that the metal would without reinforcements and stuff so um, so we've sort of halted this project we were gonna go ahead and build these beds up right here so um, but we're gonna we're gonna halt this project for right now and we're gonna start on other things and um, and like in here is looking so pretty I actually have to show you this I can't not show you this so I always talk about the crimson basil <clears throat> and how it's one of my favorite basils and let me show you why is that not gorgeous I mean look at this and they're so large I mean you could totally put these in flower beds Look at this, all the way down. I mean, that is a stunning sight. I mean, we're in September. That's incredible. Oh, I just love that. And then like when you look in here and you see like almost that bluish greenness from the kale, and then you look over here and you see this beautiful burgundy against these just gorgeous glossy basil leaves. Oh, this is so pretty. And one more thing that I have to show too. <laughs> well, while I've got you, I'm going to <clears throat> highly suggest that if you love sunflowers, you will love Jerusalem artichokes. Jerusalem artichokes are one of those things that 
I think are a great survival food because they keep multiplying when they're in the ground and they take like no care. But I want you to see this little um, collection of plants that we have over here. It's so cute. Look how tall that is. It's taller than our trellis. Isn't that amazing? And all those beautiful little flowers. I mean, it just towers over everything. Oh, it's so pretty. So that's what we did. This was this project. We are going, hopefully, I hope we can get the project done before spring <clears throat> where we're going to go ahead and do the fences and things like that. But we'll bring you along. We are just trying to, with it being in fall now, I don't even know if it's technically fall yet, <laughs> but it feels like fall. And with, with so many things kind of winding down, we are still pumping out lots of produce and plants are still coming up just beautiful. I mean, we have just had, we're still harvesting cantaloupes, beautiful cantaloupes. And it, this has just been a, a real blessing, especially considering that I haven't put as much effort as I usually do because we've been working on our bathroom all summer. So this has just been such a blessing. I hope that your gardens are a blessing to you too. So hopefully we're going to be able to, we ha actually, Chris and I, and I'll do another video on this. We have had time to think this summer. We're going through a lot of transitions right now, but we'll have another video about that. And we want to really completely like, change the garden and the farm and take you guys along with us so thanks for watching we really appreciate you know everybody who who likes and subscribes the video to our videos and uh, we have so much fun doing these and kind of documenting really just our life so we thank you for watching and remember if we can organize our garden anybody can thanks bye